Hi, my name is Albert Dunford uh, from PowerSim, the makers of PSIM, and I'm with uh, MyWave uh, representative Matsuno, and we are going to be talking about the link between PSIM and the PE Expert 4, which will hopefully enable and speed up the integration of and development of digital control for power electronics. Uh, we are, the PE Expert 4 system is a very powerful uh, mixed DSP FPGA development system, and um, Matsuno, uh, perhaps we can uh, take us through what's happening here. Okay, uh, thank you for introducing me. Um, so, so what is this box and, and how is it going to work with this motor? Yes, uh, this is a PX4, a high-end DSP and a FPGA platform for control. And this is like a, a PE inverter with a motor set. So is this, is this an inverter? Yes, it is. And how is the switches being controlled? Yes, uh, here is like a, a IGBD backside and this is the gate driver board and here is the interface board. So here is the interface board connecting with uh, this interface board. Okay, so th this is generating the PWM pulses directly? Exactly. Okay, and so those are being handled by uh, an FPGA? Exactly. And so then the control code, where does that come from? And Yes, that, that's a good point. So control code uh, based on a C is running this uh, DSP board. But the C code can be uh, generated by a PSIM. So is this is this what then? Um, so this is the PSIM simulation. Mm -hmm. So the control. What's where are these aspects of the, in relation to what's happening over here? Yes, um, as you can see, this is like a DC power source and an inverter, three phase inverter, and a diesel sensor, a diesel motor, a diesel load, and a, a encoder. So this model is exactly the same as this physical or hardware. So it's the same as the physical hardware over here. Exactly. So the power stage is being represented by the power stage here. Exactly. And the motor is being represented and it's the exact same parameter set. Yes. Okay, so then how does the control code work? Yes, um, so you, of course this is PSM, so you can simulate this model of power stage and this is control block. This is like a current feedback uh, vector control. So now, after uh, you finish uh, your simulation, uh, here is like a... Uh, 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 generate code option uh, switch here. Just uh, you click here, that uh, uh, generate the C code uh, which can be compiled and download and uh, run on, on this DSP board. So this is a dire direct C code generation of that control algorithm? Yes, exactly. And then it also includes function calls to initialize the FPGAs and run them? Exactly. So even though uh, this system using FPGA, you don't have to design FPGA at all. Uh, those are all controlled by like a C, uh, function call. Uh, that function is generated by a PSIM. Okay, perfect. Okay, so then can we see the motor <laughs> motor spin? Yes, that's an important point. So uh, let me uh, uh, back to the PSIM. So, so here, um, here's the option. Once you generate code, here's open generated code folder. So this is the um, uh, entire, sorry, this is the entire file sets needed for uh, this expert for system. So now uh, let me move to uh, this software. So here's a different software who control uh, this expert for. It's named ViewX. Sorry, it is Japanese, but uh, uh, depends on the uh, Windows uh, system. So by the way, so let me open the project file and. Uh, so this Matsuno is uh, is going to. Uh, import the s generated C code into uh, into your environment, into the PE Expert environment, development environment, and then it's going to uh, download it directly to the DSP on the in the system. Exactly. So now I open this project file, which is generated by a PSIM. So now I open, it, so then I the compile. So we've not done any coding at this point. Exactly. No, no, no coding at all. Just so all you need is like a PSIM a SIM coder. Now compile is done, then I download <laughs> so from this PC to uh, this uh, Xbox 4 now. So it's downloading now onto the DSP that's in the, in the system. Yes, so now it's ready. So can you tell us quickly about the, the performance specifications of that DSP? Yes, uh, this board using a TI 
C6657, uh, which is 1.25 gigahertz dual core. So compared to a traditional C2000 processor, mm -hmm. how much faster is it? Yes, so this has plenty of a, a computational power, so you can do even more like a three or four hundred kilohertz carry frequency that's that, easily. That's very impressive. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, because uh, this is only rated at uh, 90 megahertz, 30 megahertz or something in that, in that range? Yes. Okay, and this can only handle, say, 24 PWM outputs. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas this can handle upwards of 144 PWMs. Exactly. Wow. That's uh, based on the, this FPJ platform, so you can add more extension boards. Okay. Can handle more 100, over 100 PWMs. Okay, well let's get the motor spinning. <laughs> okay. So now uh, download is done. So let me move to this uh, GUI, uh, PEViewX. So now I just uh, execute here. Now the motor is spinning. So the, the code generated by piece uh, just driving this motor. So it's it's completely real time. Everything's working. Mm -hmm. There's no hardware simulation in this system right now. Exactly. Right. It's just complete complete hardware. So this power stage could be anything we wanted. Exactly. As long as and as long as it's configured the same way as the piece simulation was. Exactly. Perfect. So uh, may I move to the uh, Of course, GUI? yeah, let's have a look at the GUI. So once you start the code, uh, you can see many uh, debugging features. One is this wave. This is, this is like a, a wave viewer. Uh, I run the viewer. So how are we getting these wave? What are these waveforms and how are we getting them? Yes, so here's a, a button here. Uh, here shows up any variables. These are corresponding to the what you have in the PSIM. Let me uh, show you here. So for example, uh, you want to monitor the current here. So this goes to uh, this point. This is 80. So here's like a digital value of a, a current. This is the analog to digital converter representation? Exactly. This okay. corresponds correspond to the, this real hardware. So this set, sets up which channels we're going to sample the analog signals from. Exactly. Let me open this one. So this shows all like a physical configuration, like offsets, or range, etc. Okay, and so then we can monitor the digital representation in the real hardware. Then. Exactly. So this corresponds to, like you can see, it shows up like this. So let me pick up this V5, which is the current for uh, U phase. So now you can see U phase and V phase as this uh, uh, wave viewer. So these are the are the um, uh, sampled signals by the ADC. Exactly. Okay, so and. Um, well, that's and so what's the resolution of these and and uh, how are these being? Yes, this is like a five microsec sampling, so two hundred kilohertz sampling. Okay. So and it's and it's real time. So we're we're zoomed in on a, on a portion of the. Yes, exactly. You can switch to the uh, zoom in and zoom out, and also like a. So many features like FFT, you can do also FFT or you can do. Um, other things also. Okay, and so these these are the phase currents from from the motor. Exactly. Right. So this is also FFT. Uh, let me change the log. Yeah. So you can do this kind of analysis very easily. Okay. Why don't you put it back onto the currents, mm -hmm. and um, I'll I'll go over and load the motor a little bit and see if we can see the currents respond. Okay. So I've, I'm loading my thumb and then. So just lo loading with my thumb, we can see the magnitude of the currents increase and decreases the controller uh, responds to the loading of the shaft with my, my thumb. So we can see a nicely well-defined speed control loop here. Perfect. Okay. Um, and we can control and the variables, uh, like we can make the motor speed up or, or do other things with the, with the system? Yes. So here's another option uh, named like inspector. Let me open this uh, window. So I click here, it shows up all variables in your control uh, algorithm. So let me pick the speed, which is um, RPM reference, which is the speed. That's correspond to the uh, here, uh, RPM reference. Uh, this uh, parameter correspond to uh, this here so now I can change the speed so right now it's a uh, 1500 let me make it faster 
3,000. Okay. Okay, now I write. Oh, that's right. So it's getting faster. Yes. So you can debug uh, runtime. So you can change any parameters. Yeah, so it's, it's visibly much faster now. So at 3,000 RPM. Okay, wow. So um, that's a, a really good overview, I think, Matsuno, of, of how this system works. So it's really the, the, the box here, the PE Expert system, is basically a super, super control system. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be converted into a production level embedded variant too. So exactly. if the control, uh, after we've developed the control code, we can um, modify it, uh, the system to work in a, an actual end product. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, well let's maybe show how it can be used with a real-time hardware simulator now. Okay. Now we're, we've got it set up now, Matsuno, so that the motor drive, instead of it being the real hardware, we've got it now running in a hardware loop simulation. So is it the same control code that's running? Exactly. Okay, and, and then so what's the, the, the hardware loop, the Typhoon Hillbox doing now? Yes, so um, now the, this motor model, I mean inverter, uh, model is running in this box real time and uh, this connection is swapped from in real inverter to like a virtual uh, hardware which is a type of So we have the PWM waveforms um, running in real time mm -hmm. on one yeah. side and we've got the analog feedback signals here as well? Exactly. So this is like a um, PWM output coming here uh, then connected, connected to the digital input and this is the analog output which is the current voltage sensor output go through the uh, input here. So this was the same hardware that was over there controlling the motor. Exactly. So the the control system the control system doesn't know mm -hmm. if it's controlling a real motor or a simulation at this point. Exactly. This part is exactly the same as uh, uh, for the real hardware too. So here we're watching which waveforms? Yes. This is like a, a current a V phase and a U phase a current waveform. Okay. And then oh, I can see there's uh, motor speed over here as well? Yes. So can we uh, control the motor the same way again by changing those variables? Yes. So let me uh, back to this uh, PE view, uh, which is for uh, control for DSP. Uh, let me open this inspector, uh, by which you can change uh, your parameters. So now it's a 1500. Now I switch to the 3000. Uh, let me uh, right button here. Okay. So now it's run a lot faster. Oh, so yeah, I see 2,000 RPM there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did the power stage, mm -hmm. so what's on this box again? It's the inverter, the DC bus, mm -hmm. and the motor? Yes, exactly. And was that, how did we program that? Was that imported from, from PSIM somehow? Yes, so you can, uh, again, you can start in from a PSIM. Uh, let me back to the, this model. So um, this power stage is converted to a Typhoon model. Okay, so this, this portion of the schematic now is running on the Typhoon. Mm -hmm. So it's got, got, got compiled and is running on the mm -hmm. Typhoon box. Yes. And as before, the control code hasn't changed. It's still the control portion. And that's running on the, on the controls on the PDX before. Yes, exactly. So everything's in real time. And so if the, and it's a simulation. So if everything blows up, it's just a pretend simulation and everything's okay. Yes. But we should be able to move with confidence if we can spin the hardware and loop motor, mm -hmm. move to actually controlling the real system hardware yes. without making any changes. Exactly, that's the same. Perfect. Okay, well. Okay, Matsuno, uh, what do we have now uh, as a demo? Is it a, I think it's a multi level inverter that we're going to show now. Mm -hmm. so can you tell us a little bit about it? What's happening uh, on the PSIM side now? Okay, so this is a PSIM schematic. So, uh, you, as you can see, this is three phase. And this is like a seven level, uh, multi level inverter, like shrine cap. So that's a, a 36 active switches then? Exactly. Okay, so this is the, the power stage. Mm -hmm. um, and then the control is, is it's open loop over here? Yes, for this uh, demo, it's open loop. So then we're, these blocks are representing the, uh, the different FPGA um, outputs for controlling the PWMs? Exactly. So each has like 18 outputs. These correspond to this. Uh, output uh, PWM port. Okay, so when we generate the code, mm -hmm. um, it's going to automatically set up the eight, uh, the 36 PWM signals yes. to uh, come out on, on these, uh, on these cape, uh, off this FPGA board here. Yes, that's Perfect, right. okay. 
And so then what happens with the power stage? How is that being uh, handled right now? Yes. So this is a power stage. So this is converted to a real-time simulation model, and that can be run this Typhoon Hillbox. On the, on the Typhoon Hillbox. OK, yes. perfect. So can we have a look at that, uh, the power stage and that the Typhoon Hill will run? Yes. So now, uh, I, let me switch to the Typhoon Hill uh, viewer. OK, perfect. So this is Typhoon Hill uh, schematics. And, uh, OK. Okay, and so here's so it's actually running now already. Yes. Okay, so we can see the the, the levels here, mm -hmm. as the from the uh, as we as we as the gating signals work their magic, mm -hmm. um, and so this is happening again. So the control code is running mm -hmm. real time. Mm -hmm. The hill system is working mm -hmm. real time, mm -hmm. and uh, so the PWMs are being generated by by the by the PEX before system. Mm -hmm. Uh, and did we have to do any coding at all? It was all handled seamlessly. Just a couple button clicks from PSIM to generate code that then went over to the PE expert system. Exactly. Perfect. So again, that dual DSP FPGA architecture is really working for us to allow us to greatly expand the number of PWMs that would be normally accessible from a DSP. Exactly. Perfect. Wow, okay. So um, yeah, why don't, you, why don't we have a look back at the waveforms that the Typhoon system is working with and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty self-explanatory to what, what's happening is, is the, the voltage waveforms and the currents that we're seeing. So one of the great advantages of that multi-level system is a lower total harmonic distortion on the volta voltage waveform and on the current waveforms. Um, and then also giving us a, a, a much higher DC bus uh, rating than if it was just a single level. So better switching losses in general. Um, and much better uh, output, har output harmonics. Yes. Wow, okay. And it was all done with a few button clicks. Yes, it is. It is. Easy, okay. Is. Well, Matsuno, thank you so much for... You're welcome. And uh, I hope, uh, do let us know if you have any questions. Uh, there'll be some links in the description of the video. Um, or if you're watching from our website or Matsuno's website, uh, just contact us directly for sales inquiries. Thank you. You're welcome.